As we get into Proverbs, you'll find there'll be a lot of repetition. But that's okay. We learn by repetition. And when the Lord repeats things, it's because he wants us to hear it more than once. We're, we're looking, uh, a lot of the things that we look at have to do with our heart, of course. And uh, tonight, some of the, the things we're looking at in Proverbs 12 have to do with our words. I noticed that uh, at least half of the verses in the chapter say something about our words, either what we say or what we hear. Uh, we've looked at, uh, really, the whole book is, is a challenge to wisdom. God wants us to, to have wisdom. Get wisdom, he says. You know, find wisdom. And uh, as well, we talked about knowing God's will. There's, there's verses where he, he helps us to see uh, what he wants us to do. Uh, verses about giving our heart to the Lord. You know, God wants our heart. We looked at morality and sexuality. We looked at what God hates. That, that's a good, good thing to know. You don't want to do what God hates. Uh, we've looked at how to handle money. Last week we looked at generosity. And uh, tonight we're going to look about who we are and what we say. I'm going to read uh, Proverbs 12. I'll just read verses 1 through 8 to start with. Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. I'll just stop reading there. We'll look at quite a few verses this evening. But in these, these verses and in this chapter, uh, who we are and what we say uh, is going to be greatly influenced by what we hear. You know, it's, um, it's interesting how people can talk and you don't actually hear them. Or you can hear a sound, but you don't actually hear them. Uh, you know, you can actually read the Bible and not get anything out of it. Uh, God wants us to hear. What we hear will make a difference. And that first verse there, Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. It's an interesting word, isn't it? Brutish. What he's saying there, brutish is, is like, it's being like an animal. Like a brute, you know, that's, it's not a, not talking about a, a person, but it's talking about uh, someone who just doesn't think like an animal. Uh, later on in Proverbs 30, he says, Surely I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. And he's just saying when a, when a person doesn't think about things, when they don't hear, whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. Uh, be a learner you know, all your life. Be a learner. Admire truth. That, that's what he's saying here. Uh, we need to be learners. And uh, really, I put in my notes, learner or loser? <laughs> you know, if, if you're not a, lear a learner, uh, you're going to be losing out. Uh, in chapter 12 and verse 15, he says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. If you always want to be right, just be a fool. <laughs> You'll be right about everything, whether you're right or not. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. We need to be hearers. We need to be learners. And in verse 2, he talks about the difference between good and, and wicked. A good man obtaineth favor, favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. Uh, there's a difference between right and wrong, between good and evil. And uh, we need to be looking to do what's good, to be what's good. God is concerned about our character. Really, a, a lot of our life is our character. You know, we can pretend to be things, but the real us is, is our character. And verse 4, he talks about a virtuous woman. It's a crown to her husband. Really the same would apply to a man. You know, it, it makes a big difference whether a wife can look to her husband as a virtuous man or a, wife, a husband to his wife as a virtuous woman. Now, the word virtue means strength. You know, have, have character. And it, it relates to verse 3. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. And righteousness gives you strength. It puts a root down. It, it gives you a basis. Um, wickedness doesn't. Easily toppled. In uh, 
Ephesians 6, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's what God wants for us. And I find it interesting in 2 Peter chapter 1, second on God's list, just right after faith, is virtue. You ever, you ever looked at that list? Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, he says, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. We usually start, you know, right after somebody gets saved, pumping them full of knowledge, you know. But God says it's not so much what you know, it's what you do. Um, in our list of verses, Proverbs 16, 3, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. You know, do what's right and God will help you then to get the right thinking going. Uh, God wants us to be virtuous people. Uh, let me give you more of that list from 2 Peter. He says, uh, add, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Then listen to what he says. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Uh, we need to start where the Lord starts. Start with faith. Add virtue. Add all of these things like he says. God wants us to, uh, God's concerned about our character. He wants us to be virtuous. He also wants us to be diligent. Now, there's other character qualities we could look at here in Proverbs 12, but this is one that, uh, that came up in verse 24. He says, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. It's important to notice the contrast that God makes. You know, God will give, in a lot of these verses, he'll say one thing, and then he'll say, but, and he'll give you the contrast. Uh, the, the opposite of diligence is being slothful. Uh, I wrote in my, on my Bible here by slothful just this once. You know, a lot of times in life, you think, oh, just this once, I'll, I won't do what I'm supposed to do. I won't listen to the alarm. I won't, just this once. And, you know, then it becomes, anyway, we, we, we all know the story. That's not being diligent. Diligent. You know, it's, it's not saying, oh, just kind of let it go. It's being reliable. That's what being diligent is. It's not being slothful. It's making wise decisions. Later on in verse 27, here's an interesting one. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Some of you have seen this. Uh, I see it regularly, door knocking. You'll come to a house and there's just stuff everywhere. I can almost count on that that's a person who doesn't have a job. Now, it's not, it's not always true, but it's a person who doesn't value things. We had a guy call us one time and he, he needed food for his family. I got there and here was five brand new bikes laying on the lawn, laying on the lawn. And he couldn't afford food because he bought his kids bikes. Uh, that's exactly what he's talking about here. They don't value things. They, they'll go out hunting, but then they're too, too lazy to strip it and clean it and, and cook it. We need to be diligent. And uh, what he's talking about here shows our heart. And, you know, our heart can deceive us. We can think, oh, I'm all right. I, you know, I only miss once in a while. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? In, these, in this chapter, he mentions the heart several times, and I'm afraid most of the times it's negative. Uh, verse 8, A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. Perverse means crooked. Uh, if our heart is, is crooked, in uh, verse 20, he says, Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. Our heart can be deceitful, tricky. God wants us, I thought it was interesting that the two things he mentions there are both fruit of the Spirit, peace and joy. That's the way God wants us to operate, not trying to trick people, not trying to get our way, but trying to have peace, trying to have joy. Uh, verse 23, a prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Look at that verse again, but our heart can be foolish. Uh, Another one of our, our verses that we're, we're learning is, is Proverbs 14, 9. Uh, Fools make a mock at sin. The verse before it is, The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but 
the folly of fools is deceit. <laughs> you know, our heart can make us think that if we just get our own way, you know, it doesn't matter how we do it. We can trick people, whatever. God says that's, that's not right. We need to be diligent. We need to, be, uh, to have character and, and be virtuous. And we need God's help to know the difference between right and wrong. You know, we, we sing and, and we read in Psalm 139, you know, uh, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You know, God, God knows our hearts and can help us. God is concerned about our, our virtue and, and so should we. Now, as you read through the book of Proverbs, you'll see things that will condemn you. Um, go with it, you know. Don't just ignore it. Ask the Lord how, how you need to apply that, you know, what needs to happen. Other times you'll see things, yeah, you know, the Lord's working that in my life. Good. Uh, if you see something that's a characteristic of a fool and you think, boy, I do that, well, quit it. <laughs> you know, do something about it. Adopt God's word. Uh, a fool, you know, we don't want to be people who won't listen, who won't hear, who won't be instructed. We want to be people that God can teach us things. God is also concerned about our words. Like I said, a lot of the verses in Proverbs 12 deal with our words. And again, our words come from our heart. Our character comes out. Um, K in, in our memory verses is Proverbs 4.23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Keep your heart. God is concerned about our heart because things come out of it. And our words need to be, well, let's look at some verses here. Verse 5 the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. He wants our, our words to be right. You know, people who are wicked, their thoughts come out in wicked counsel. The thoughts of the righteous are right, not deceitful. In verse 13, the wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. Our words need to be right. It's interesting in those verses 5 and 13, uh, righteous and, and just, exactly the same word. He's talking about being right. Uh, our words need to be right. Now, that, that's a pretty general way to, to look at it. Verse 6, our words need to be true. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. We need to be upright. You know, that's, a, that's an expression we use, you know, not just being right, but being, but being upright, being, uh, being true in what we say. Verse 17, he that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness, deceit. We need to speak the truth. Now, there may be some times when we just can't speak, but when we speak, we should make sure it, it's true. Uh, verse 19, the lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. You think you're going to get away with something for, by lying. Someone has said, no one has a good enough memory to be a liar. <laughs> uh, we just, it just doesn't work, and we might as well tell the truth. Uh, verse 22, this is, this is our L in our, our memory verses. So if, if you're learning these, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. They that deal truly are his delight. God doesn't want us to be liars. He wants us to, to be true in our words. And then as well, verse 8, as we've read, our words need to be wise. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom. But he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. The way we're going to get wisdom is to go to the Lord. It's not enough just to have experience. You can have experience and be wrong every time. <laughs> you know, it's true. Uh, but we can, we can know the truth, and the truth will make us free, the Bible says. We can go to God's word and, and get wisdom. He, he implores us to. But then, in verse 18 and a few other verses, our words need to be helpful. Uh, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. I believe that that first part is negative because of the contrast. The second part is, is positive. The tongue of the wise is health. So the first part is negative. He that speaketh like the piercing, there is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword. Uh, you know, there's, there's times when people say things that just aren't helpful. You've had it happen. You've probably done it. I know I have. 
you say something, and that didn't help. <laughs> I remember we learned that uh, you know, when you come home from work and your wife has been messing with the kids and getting dinner ready and uh, all of that kind of thing, that's not the time to bring up some important issue. <laughs> uh, the teacher, we were, whatever it was, seminar we were at, he called that the pit hour, you know. Uh, there's times when your, your words can, oh, they might be true, you know, but the Bible says speak the truth in love. Uh, is, we need to have our words be helpful. Um, Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath. Grievous words stir up anger. Uh, our words need to be helpful. The, the next verse there says, that's Proverbs 15, 2, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Uh, we need to be careful with our words. Uh, back to Proverbs 12, verse 20. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. Our words need to be helpful. We need to bring peace and, and joy. Uh, verse 23. A prudent man concealeth knowledge. But the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Now again, you, you look at the context and you see that the first part is the positive part. A prudent man concealeth knowledge. Sometimes you just don't have to say everything you know. Right. You know, there's just things that you're going to know that don't need to be shared at that particular time or to that particular person or whatever. A prudent man, so that's a good thing. Prudent concealeth knowledge. It's not talking about being secretive or anything, but there's just... Sometimes things need to be said, sometimes they don't. But the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Um, take that to heart. Proverbs 20, uh, verse 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Um, I, thought it was, I wanted to point out that verse because when he says, a prudent man concealeth knowledge, if you've got time with a prudent person, you can draw out their knowledge. You can draw out their wisdom. And that's good. But a prudent person is not going to just lay everything on you all at once or every time. Sometimes you're going to have to, you're going to, have to draw it out of them. And God says that's a good thing. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will, will draw it out. So you see both sides of it there. Verse 25 is, is the one I was heading to of chapter 12. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Our words should be helpful. Uh, there's, I, I don't know if, if, if this is something new, but I feel like in Australia now, it's kind of the practice is to kick people when they're down. Have you noticed that? Maybe it's just the yahoos and the, the thugs and skinheads or something, but um, it just seems more common now, you know, when somebody's having a problem, man, you put the boot in. Uh, well, as Christians, we need to be careful. Uh, heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. D don't give them another hard word. You know, that's not necessarily the time to, to lay it on them. Um, but a good word maketh it glad. You've experienced that, where you've had a heavy heart and someone's just said or done the right thing and it's, it's been a blessing. Uh, we need to, to strive to be that, that kind of a person. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. Just a uh, hand on the shoulder or... You know, just an acknowledgement can, can be a blessing. Uh, what we're saying here is that with our words, we need to try to make people better. We need to try and help them. Uh, chapter 27, verse 17 of Proverbs. You tell me who you think of when I read this. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Yes, can he, Every time he'd pray, he'd pray that. Um, it's just saying, uh, a, a good words, a good person will make others better. And we need to use our words like that. Words, you know, James in different places, he talks about, you know, they, they can be a fire. They can, they can cause damage. Or they can be a, you know, a fountain of life, I think is the kind of the picture he uses in James there. Uh, God's concerned about our words. He's concerned about our virtue. God wants us to have good character and to have that reflected in, in what we say. So, in summary, uh, our speech should be in good taste. <laughs> uh, we're living in a day and age when people, people talk very crudely. 
and, and very unkindly many times as well. The, the key for us is it needs to be pleasing to the Lord. Ultimately, we give an account to the Lord. Uh, it should be helpful. Our words should be helpful. Our words should be true. And if we're not sure, then we shouldn't say. But particularly, our words should be under God's control. You, know, you go back to uh, Proverbs 4.23 when he says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And you know, sometimes when we say something, we'll, we'll be disappointed in ourselves. But you know, it's just revealing something that's in our heart. We need to get, that, get it right with the Lord. Uh, we, we often sing and, and I think probably pray Psalm 19 when he says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And I hope that that's, that's your prayer. Uh, you, you will not get through life without offending someone by your speech. Uh, but, you know, God can, can help us to get it right with those, and God can help us to do it less. He does warn that those that have to talk the most are going to offend the most, and that's me. So uh, when I offend you, you, you let me know, or, or just forgive me without letting me know, but whatever. <laughs> Either one. Any comments or questions? This is, this is something that affects us all, isn't it? We all talk. <laughs>